Hey and welcome! Today we will solve Rotate Image interview question, which mostly asked by Amazon as well as other companies like so. We will explore two interesting solutions for this problem, so without further ado, let's dive in! First example, as you can see, top edge move to the right edge, right edge move to the bottom edge, bottom to the left, and finally left to the top. That is what this question means by rotating 19 degrees clockwise. Second example, again, rotating 19 degrees clockwise would be like that. But note that when we have more than one layer, we need to take care of all possible layers in that data set. Like in this case, we need to rotate the inner layer as well. So if we do it one more time, it will be like that. Let's jump into the solutions. So there are actually two solutions for this problem. First one is a bit mathematics related and easy, but second one, I would like to call it engineering oriented. We will explore both. For math solution, what we need to do is simple. We need to transpose the matrix first, rows becomes columns and columns becomes rows, and then reverse every row inside of that matrix. Those two steps will give us the answer as you can see it in here. And the code for that is going to be super simple like this. For more in-depth solution, the idea is that we can rotate matrix in groups of four for each cells in the edge of matrix. For that, if we break this solution down, we need to consider three things. First, we need to perform swapping cells in each layers of our matrix. That means we need to find the depths of it. Second is how many operations we need to do per each layer. And lastly, we need to find which cell will replace which. For finding the depth of our matrix, since it is n by n matrix and all sides are equal, we can cut one of its edges by two and that will be your depth. We will use master floor because of odd cases, since the very center cell of matrix in odd cases doesn't need to be rotated. In order to find the operations count in each layer, we need to swap cells values as long as we've done with the edge cells. But we don't want to swap the last cell in the edge, right? Because it just swapped with the first cell. So the number of operations per each depth will become n minus 1, where n is the length of our matrix, and negative 1 because we will ignore the last cell. But that is not the end of the story. As a last thing, how we are going to know that which cell should replace which? We need to know target cells index before getting replaced. For corners, it's pretty much obvious. We know that corners might be replaced with other counterparts. The tricky ones will be the cells in the edges. We will have i and j indices from our traversal, but we are going to need a third variable in order to keep track of the distance between base cell, the cell that value comes from, and the target cell, the cell to replace its value. And we will call it offset. This offset will be again the edges length minus one. Everything is kind of simple so far for our three by three matrix, but let's spice it up a bit. What if we have four by four matrix or even five by five one? Will our solution work? Well, no. Everything we did so far was based on the layer we were in. I mean the operations count and offset variable was for that layer. And obviously, we might consider them when we have bigger matrices. So let's take the big elephant in the room and explain. If we go deep one layer, our edges in the matrix will be reduced by two cells. So we might subtract that two cell from operations count in each layer that we go deep. And for the offset as well, we might subtract the depth index as we go deep into our matrix because we need to do our operations in their respective layer and don't want that performing operations from deeper layers mess up already swapped numbers in outer layers. Okay, all of those three important factors will come together in order to make the swapping cells to happen. But how? If we have the depths, we know that how many times we need to do all work. In this case, three times. If we know the operations count, we know how many swaps we need to do in each depth. And if we know the offset amount between cells, we would adjust the i and j indices with or offset in order to know which cell will replace which. One quick thing before jumping into the code. For doing the actual swap, if we start doing it clockwise, we need to do three things. First, find the base cell and the target cell. Second, store target cell's value in the temp variable. And lastly, replace target cell with the base cell's value. This will happen for each operation in each depth of our matrix. But the point here is, as soon as we done with our first iteration, we need to keep the next operation's target cell's value in a temp variable, right? I mean the nine here. But at the same time, we cannot override the temp variable variable which we have from previous iteration because if we do so we will lose the previous temp value before even using it so we need a new temp variable after updating our target cell but this cycle will go through all operations in the given depths, right? Actually, there's a way to get around this. If we perform this operation in counterclockwise, we will only save first cell's value in a temp variable and replace it with the previous
previous cells over and over until the last one. At the end, we will have an empty cell right here that we can use our temp variable for it. Now, let's jump into the code to show you this process. First thing we need to do is getting the length of our site or so-called edge of our matrix. Then it's time for our depths. As we discussed earlier, it will be our matrix length divided by two, but wrap the mass.blur for odd cases. Then it's time for our iterations based on each level of depths we are. Inside of this for loop, we need two things. First, our operations count. Second, the offset. Operations count will be length of our edge subtracted by last item. We also need to consider the depths. Remember that each level we go deeper, we get rid of two cells. Now our offset, again, it is the length of edge minus one and also subtracted by the depths. Now we need to take care of each operation, right? For that, we will do another for loop. Inside of this, first we will get a backup of our first cell's value. Then we will swap values in counterclockwise. And also please note that how we are leveraging the offset variable in order to adjust the coordinates of target cells in each operation. So at the end, we don't need to return anything. Now if I run this, test cases are passing and if I submit, we are in a good shape here. Now let's jump back to the slides for time and space complexity analysis. For time complexity, we will have O of C, where C is the count of all cells in our matrix, and that is because every cell has been read and swapped only once. For space complexity, it will be O of 1, because we really don't do anything special with memory. So that was it for this video. I will put Erase playlist in the description for you to check it out. Thanks for watching, and please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And finally, hope you enjoyed this video, and stay tuned for the next one.